there's a lot of pros and cons of the real estate market. Um, you can obviously have potential income. Uh, so if you rent out a property or lease out a property, a commercial building, for instance, have, have some cash flow. Uh, you have growth over time. Generally, over a long period of time, you'll get some capital appreciation on the building and the hard asset itself. Um, it's a great diversification piece also for your portfolio. Traditionally, not 100% correlated to stocks or bonds, which you probably have a lot of um, exposure to via other types of accounts like 401ks or your own investment accounts. Um, and also, real estate tends to keep up with inflation. As inflation moves up uh, due to economic pressures, you'll see that different types of rent and you know, property values will also increase over a long period of time. Um, generally, that keeps up with inflation, and as those, those cash flows and that you know, capital appreciation moves up, you're able to keep up with uh, purchasing power and keep up with the inflation that you know, has, has built into the economy and into your life. So real estate's a really interesting uh, type of asset. Uh, we do look at it as an investment itself, um, not you know just a consumption asset where you just live there, but it also has can have capital appreciation. And there's a couple different ways that you can invest in real estate. That would include purchasing property, so buying a home. It's probably the one that we most you know are most familiar with. Uh, you can also get into partnerships, things like real estate limited partnerships. They may have heard of. Um, you also have REITs or real estate in, in investment trusts. There's a number of public and private ones that you're able to invest in. And um, you also have real estate mutual funds and exchange traded funds that are a little bit more broad, much more diversified, um, have a lot of different pieces in there that might be helpful uh, depending on how you like to invest in, in real estate. And there's also mortgage backed securities, which plays a little bit on real estate. Not exactly the whole asset, but back on the um, on the debt on that, which is you know all tied and correlated to the real estate market completely. Hey, this sounds like a great idea. We're going to have some cash flow. I can rent it out. Um, you know, it sounds like a great little buffer of passive income. Uh, there's also some cons to consider too. Uh, one, there is a cost. Uh, you know, how are we going to pay for the down payment? You have to become a property manager, which, to be honest, is kind of a full-time job. Uh, working with tenants, making sure the house is kept correctly, uh, paying you know, taxes and expenses, um, and also working, working with the tenants. You could have some tenant issues, whether, they're, whether you have a lot of vacancy for a long time or you have a tenant that could be an, you know, uh, maybe a little more sticky to your property. Um, real estate tends to be generally illiquid. So if you do need to have access to cash or any kind of liquidity, it's going to be harder to get rid of your real estate pieces, some, some of the versions, so purchasing a property, for instance, versus selling a stock or a bond and just accessing that cash quickly. Um, as we can see, pr prices can be volatile. You look at different you know, times in the market, um, look at 2008 when there was a you know, financial crisis. So you can look kind of recently after COVID prices went down, prices pop back up, you're going to find a lot of volatility there and you have to wait. You could have to be patient for uh, when you want to sell and try to recoup some of that cost. And there is quite a bit of com complexity around there, um, owning property. So there's a lot of you know laws and regulations that govern real estate and they just vary by your location and where you purchase the properties. Um, you know, there might be a lot of tenants rules or they you know, you may run into actually a number of tax implications when you go to sell your property or try to claim the income. So all those things are necessary to consider before you kind of get into real estate and figure out how you want to get into real estate and all the different ways that you can. Here at Quorum, what we love to do is take a look at your, all your, your entire portfolio holistically. Um, you know, let's look at your liquidity, let's look at your goals, let's look at your age, your retirement, your income, what can you afford? We kind of take a look at the snapshot of where you're at right now, um, your liquidity needs, your different goals, whether you're on approach to retirement, you just had, you have young children that you have to take care of, and see what is available to you, whether it's buying a home for peace of mind and, you know, locking in that cost of living, or you know, maybe that's a part of your investment portfolio at this point, where you look at a, a private REIT, or you look at you know, mutual funds or exchange traded funds at this point, just so you can get some of that, you know, some of that hedging 
and some of that buffer in your portfolio away from some of your larger other assets too.